Hello, it's Dr. Ken here with you. This is a four-part video series on competency-based assessment in AC, just as an example. It goes for about 15 minutes. We're going to look at setting expectations, making sure students understand how their previous learning will impact their learning, and the context of their learning using competency-based assessment. So this little picture gives you an overall um, indication of how I go about it. So the first thing to understand is the previous learning. So normally I do a little diagnostic that uh, gives students an understanding of how well they've performed in DC drawings, electromag. It's a bit of a diagnostic. Quite often they haven't picked up all the particular skills that they will need to uh, do AC. So we have a look at some of the holes that they may have there. We then look at what I would call expectations. That's up here in the top right hand corner. And we look at um, the hard way to do AC, the very hard way to do it, and the very hard long way. Some of my students have to do this three times. And then we also look at uh, some learning how to learn, and that's particularly amplified on my personal website at um, wideforimagination.com. Then we'll be looking at uh, setting the context, and the context that I use is Electrical Principles by Phillips Textbook. And once we've done that, we can then move on to the other aspects. So I hope you enjoy this uh, little 15 minute video presentation. Um, as I said, this is competency based assessment in AC as an example. This is part one of four expectations, previous learning and context. I hope you enjoy. Hello, it's Dr. Ken here with competency based training and assessment. And I'm building this little video around UEE NEEG 102A, solve problems in low voltage AC circuits. So here we go. What is competency based training? When we say competency based training, we actually mean what is competency based assessment. Competency based training actually doesn't exist the way students learn and they learn in different ways in different contexts. The way the teacher teaches or delivers also varies. So there is no right or wrong way to learn or teach. So competency-based assessment, what is that in AC? The assessment tools I'm about to show you were developed from the National Training Package and the CIT mapping requirements. At CIT, all assessment approaches must assess each of the topics in AC. There happen to be 15 of these. Each topic subpoint, and for our training package in AC, there's an average of 8 to 10 of these per topic. And the critical aspects, which are A to G in AC. The range statement also has to be assessed. So all the above must be demonstrated on more than one occasion, it says. So the above must be assessed at least twice, more if the assessor deems this necessary to show competence. So what else? My approach to competency-based training and assessment is about more than just an assessment tool or a set of tools. I have an overall approach that sets up a complete learning framework for the student that allows no wiggle room, but still they try and they always fall short, I'm afraid. So one, I set up expectations. I call this learning AC three ways, the hard way, the very hard way, and the very hard long way. I also do some introduction to learning how to learn in electrotechnology. Two, I have a subject unit study guide and it's actually a booklet that I've produced that gives the student useful information rather than a study guide they look at day one and then they leave it in the bottom of their bag or throw away. Three, the tutorial exercise book, traditionally done 
in a combination of other resources. Normally we used to purchase from TAFE New South Wales, but I've now produced my own exercise tutorials for AC, for the eLearn website, and we can also use energy space with some caveats, and I'll explain those a little bit later on. But I've put up a full set of videos for AC on the eLearn website. Five, we have face-to-face -face delivery of the content and the practicals. Content is built around the textbook slides with my additions. Practicals are sourced from energy space. Six, the KA3 or Knowledge Assessment 3, that is an open assessment that runs for 17 weeks over the whole unit. And then seven, uh, then there are two knowledge assessments and five skills assessments from and in energy space. So now I'll show you how this all works in far more detail. So setting expectations, it's a 42 slide presentation that I do. Um, as I point out to the students, it is a little bit tongue in cheek. So first, AC is hard. So you're going to need to embrace it. If not, you're going to end up doing it twice. And still, if you don't embrace it, you will end up doing it three times. Two explanations around good and poor study approaches. We do kind of both directions. Then we do what is competency-based assessment explained in very fine detail. I basically read the subject guide to them. Four, learning resources are highlighted, including tutorial nights and other resources they have available to them. And then we do some DC plans and drawings, electromag knowledge assessment, all around Ohm's law, simple circuit analysis, drawing and symbols and inductance. It's a bit of a diagnostic um, tool so that the students have an idea of where their holes might be before they even start AC. And unfortunately, many of them have large holes that they're going to have to uh, fill up on their way through AC or preferably before they actually get into the seriousness of it. So here's just a couple of slides that I've just selected out the hard way. Um, do the unit once do all the required work, put in two plus hours extra work each week, and I explain to them how the training package works, um, how it's funded by the federal and state governments, how their employer pays for them to come, and in effect, you know, it's nothing short of they should also provide an extra two hours themselves. How to use the tutorial evenings, um, attend and engage deeply in all the lessons. Anticipate and be prepared to make deep and abiding change. It's unavoidable. And then I have my three little catch cry words. Precision, presence and persistence. I want precision, not necessarily in the math, but precision in understanding the physics. Presence, to stay in the lesson with their mindset for the whole four hours that they're there and persistence to stick at it week in week out for 18 weeks and they will pass i introduce them to the textbook electrical principles by peter phillips um, of course it's a part of the assessment process in ac is the only open book they're allowed so we explain to them you know purchase the book Day one, I have many students who haven't purchased the book and don't do it till about halfway through or just before the first assessment. So they're already setting themselves up for failure. The very hard way, don't purchase the textbook. Just rely on the handouts and the notes. Or the very long hard way, just don't get the book. Just cursorily follow the handouts, etc. Then there's Dr. Ken's videos on the eLearn, and I explain to them that I've developed 12 AC lessons that cover the 15 topics of the training package. So I've created some economy by reducing 15 lessons to 12. The lessons and podcasts are built around the textbook by Phillips, so they can use that to follow it, and that will improve their learning. 
the videos are simple PowerPoint slides just like you're watching now with me talking and drawing over the top not flashy but very effective if you don't like reading also very good for getting ahead or for doing revision um, I talked to them about their smartphones and remind them that the smartphone not only informs them but it also actually forms the way they think unfortunately for good or evil phone screens have inoculated them against deep and abiding changes which is what they're going to need so it's about reminding them that a phone is a tool and not a toy then I get into the competency based assessment with not so much detail but just hitting the major points assessing competency of knowledge and skills separately and together that is vertically down through the topic areas in the KAs and the SAs and horizontally across the topic areas both in the KAs and the SAs competency based assessment asks at least two essential questions about every topic and sub point T1 to T15 from either the knowledge perspective and skills perspective and sometimes a combination of both therefore a student to be competent they must get every assessment perspective question correct because it's only asked once in that particular assessment this is the reason there is two attempts at all assessments more than adequate time is allowed typically three hours per assessment all reasonable resources are available or provided in our particular case it's an open textbook exam skills often have to be demonstrated a minimum of two times as it is in our particular range statement so skills assessments may seem to duplicate sometimes but we do that for very good reason then I also point out to them what competency assessment is not it's not about getting just enough marks there are no marks from an assessment perspective despite some of the online systems that we use do have some percentages but we don't use them it's about being competent successful in 90% of the topic range must be successful in all to be assessed as competent for the unit so even 90% is not good enough it's not about doing very little study and using the first assessment attempt as a feeling out exercise this is very very poor and catastrophic approach and as I speak to you now I'm doing assessments and I have got students doing this very thing and they are not going to pass AC I'm afraid it's not about cramming for the second assessment attempt you still have to get all the questions correct this is near impossible if the gap between assessment one and assessment two is too great the second assessment attempt is about demonstrating the filling of small gaps in a student's understanding not big ones so it is wise if not necessary to study and work hard early and consistently otherwise you will end up repeating the unit that's it for now thank you for watching and I hope you got something out of a segment on competency-based assessment in AC with Dr Ken all the best bye